Hi everybody, it's me, Miss Ward, and my buddy Lavender, and we're here for lesson 3.2, Observing the Horizon of Spinning Earth. Let's get started. So let me remind you of our chapter three question. Why did daytime change to nighttime while Sai talked on the phone, right? So that's our chapter three question, and that's what we're trying to answer. So in the last lesson, we observed that the sun looked like it was in different places. Remember we saw a little video and it looked like the sun was in different places as it changed from daytime to nighttime during sunset. So what we wanna know now is where is the sun in the sky at different times? So that's what you and I and Lavender are gonna work on today. Before we really dig into today's lesson though, I want to make sure that we go over what I asked you guys to do last time. So the last time we were together, I asked you guys to go outside and observe the sky and try to figure out a way that we can keep track of where the sun is in the sky so we can explain it to somebody who's not there. What did you guys come up with about how to keep track of where the sun is in the sky? Just go ahead and tell me. I hear a lot of really good answers. So I want to remind you of something that we talked about last time too. So let's look at our picture of Seattle here. So I added this because I want to remind you guys about what we talked about, about the special line where it looks like the sky meets the earth. Do you guys remember what we called that special line? So if you look at my picture here of Seattle, do you see how there's sort of a line? You could imagine a line where the sky meets the earth. Do you remember what we called that? Yeah, I hear some of you guys saying that. It's the horizon. And I have that up on my word wall too here, horizon. And we're gonna use the horizon to help us figure out about how to keep track of where the sun is in the sky. So, Let's look at that big photo that shows what the sky looked like for Sai when he started talking to his grandma on the phone. And we'll talk about what you observe on the horizon, right? So pay attention to the horizon. So that imaginary line where the earth and the sky look like they come together. So let's look at the horizon in this picture. What do you guys notice about the horizon in this picture? Okay, so how would you describe where the sun is in the sky in this picture? I put my glasses on and got real close so that we can look really carefully and actually outline the horizon in this picture. So here, I'm going over these kind of little bushes far away and then it goes down and there's this flat part a few more bushes up oh, here's a tree and another tree so I'm just outlining the horizon oh I bet you guys could do a way better job than me there I go I'm doing my best I'm doing my best oh look there's a tall tree and I go down and then here, the horizon, okay? So how could we use this horizon line to help us describe to somebody who can't see this picture where the sun is? So how could you guys use the horizon to describe where the sun is? What would you say? Okay, yeah. So I hear some people saying that it looks like the sun is kind of almost touching the ground over here on this flat part and that it's not over here where the trees are, right? So you see how we can use the horizon to help us decide or not decide, but describe where the sun is, okay? Now that we've had a little practice using the horizon to sh talk about where the sun is. Um, let's do some more observing of the horizon. So 
We're gonna create a sky mural to help us keep track of where the sun is in the sky, okay? And first though, we need to add the horizon to our mural. So what I want you guys to do next is make some observations of the horizon where you are so that we can use the horizon to talk about where the sun is in the sky. So what I did is I went outside my house. We have to kind of change this activity because we're not all together. So what I did is I went outside and I took pictures um, of the horizon from outside my house and I took five pictures. And I'm gonna show you what I did so that afterwards you can do some part of this project on your own. So this is my picture number one um, and you can see my, my chicken coop and I was really paying attention to this line where the sky meets, um, looks like it's touching the earth. And then I decided what was important to draw. And then this is what I decided was important to draw. Um, so I drew the chicken coop because I decided that was important and that tall tree and that sort of bushy tree. So that's what I decided to draw. And then this is my picture number two and when I looked at this picture, well, let me listen to you. What do you guys notice about the horizon in this picture? Okay, what I noticed was, well, and I don't know if you noticed the basketball hoop, but I noticed the basketball hoop because I know that my husband's always out there playing basketball. So that seemed like an important part to add. So I had the basketball hoop and then those three trees. So two tall ones on the side and a smaller one in the middle. And then here's my picture number three. What do you guys think I drew for this one? <laughs> okay, so I drew two really tall trees. As a matter of fact, when I um, made this picture for my mural, I made those tall trees even taller by adding an extra piece of paper and then there's the mountains in the background. You can't really see them too well in this picture because it was such a cloudy day, but I knew they were there, so I drew them anyway. And then here's picture number four. And I decided for picture number four, what was important to draw was that bushy tree and the telephone pole, so I could remember the horizon from that part. And this is picture number five from my hand. What do you think I drew for this one? So I drew the big orange house and the trees from far away, okay? So you guys are gonna do something like this. Oh, I forgot. One of the things I noticed when I was out taking pictures is the door of my chicken coop. I completely forgot that I had drawn a horizon on my chicken coop. And because I'm already talking about the chicken coop, I wanted to share something with you guys. Hold on a second. You guys ready? Look at this. I have three baby chicks. Do you see them? Aren't they the cutest? <laughs> I thought that would make you smile. Isn't that great? Doesn't have anything to do with our lesson, but I wanted to share it with you anyway. Thanks for letting me share my chicks with you. Um, let me talk to you a little bit about how you guys are going to be a part of making observations about the horizon. So you have some choices. So one is you can get an adult help to look outside and make some observations about the horizon just like I did. So you go out to a spot like where, you, like where you see these kids are doing, and then you look and you decide what's important about the horizon and then you draw it. So that's one choice you have. If you can't really get outside to look at part of the horizon, you can actually use Google Maps to find a picture of your horizon using your address. I did that and I was able to find a picture that looks a lot like one of the ones I went out and found. So, and I just got this right off Google Maps so you can do that as well. So you have a couple of choices on how you do that. And you also have choices on how you record your observations. So maybe you have a packet and you can record your observation on a sheet like this, or maybe you just use a blank piece of paper. I just used a blank piece of paper. I found that actually worked better 
than using the um, observation sheet, but it's really up to you. And then you're gonna use those observations to make a horizon on our mural. So again, we have to be flexible with this part too. So let me tell you what maybe you'll be doing and maybe you won't be doing and we'll just kind of figure it out as we go. So I made my own sky mural here with the pictures that I drew with you guys. So that's one thing that we'll have is we'll have my sky mural that we can use for the rest of the investigations. And maybe you're working on these lessons with your classroom teacher and maybe they have a great idea for how you guys can create a sky mural together. So that might be happening too. And the other choice is that you could make your own sky mural at home um, just using a, um, a paper sack. So I just used a paper sack like you get at the grocery store and you can have a grown up cut it out for you and then you have this nice long strip and you could draw your horizon right on this, right? So you have lots of choices for how to do your own sky mural. Once you get your observations done of the horizon, you're gonna make, wanna make your drawings much bigger than you drew them the first time so that you can see them really clear, clearly on your sky mural. And I'll show you the one that I made, but I also wanna show you that you don't even have to cut it out or you know have any different colors if you're just doing it on the sack. Like if you're doing it on the sack, you can just draw right on the sack yourself and, and you can end up with a really neat um, horizon sky mural yourself. But I'll show you the one I made. Just give me a second and I'll move the camera here. So here's the one that I made. And you can see that I have them numbered from the different places I looked. One, two, three, four, five. And I just took those observations that I made and I made the pictures really big. And then I just taped them right on above the numbers. And like I said before, um, you don't even have to do it that way. That way can be pretty complicated. You can just draw it right on the sack too. That also works really well, okay? Our next step is going to be to use a pen to draw a dashed line along the horizon on our sky mural so that we can really mark out our horizon. So let me show you. Do you guys see that dashed line? And I'm just gonna finish it up here. Let me finish up my horizon line here. I already did most of it. then I need my horizon label. See, I put that, those same dashed lines on the horizon label so you remember what that is. We'll mark that. Okay. And then what's next? Oh yeah, okay, so I also need to add the earth label and the sky label. So let me do that too. Earth label here and my sky label up here. Okay. That was a lot of work. But the good thing is, is that now we have the horizon on the sky mural and it'll help us all keep track of where the sun is. 
and hopefully you guys will be able to make a sky mural yourselves and it'll help us answer questions about where the sun is in the sky at different times. You probably noticed that we don't have the sun on our murals yet, right? And that's because that's what we're gonna do next time. So here's the question I wanna leave you with, is how could we use our sky murals to record and keep track of where the sun is in the sky? That's what I want you guys to think about for next time. All right, I'll see you again.